Hi everyone, I am Dr. Wafai Badawi, a senior consultant histopathologist and head of pathology department, AKMICH, KSA. I am going to talk about germ cell neoplasms of the ovary, Struma ovarii. General background. Struma ovarii is a monodermal teratoma composed exclusively or predominantly of mature thyroid tissue. It is the most common type of monodermal teratoma and represents approximately 3% of all teratomas. Thyroid tissue occurs in 5% to 15% of teratomas. Most patients are peri or post menopausal, either asymptomatic or complaining of abdominal distension, secondary to the mass or ascites. Struma ovarii does not typically alter thyroid hormone levels and uncommonly recurs or persists after ovarian cystectomy. The whole range of pathologic changes seen in eotopic thyroid can also occur in struma ovarii, including diffuse or nodular hyperplasia, hyperthyroidism, less than 10% of the cases, thyroiditis, carcinomas, up to 10% of the cases. They range from well-differentiated papillary to follicular to anaplastic high-grade carcinomas, malignant lymphomas. Gross appearance. Struma ovarii is unilateral and usually solid with small cystic areas and measures under 10 cm in most cases. The cut surface is soft, waxy, or gelatinous, with a golden yellow to beefy, reddish-brown color, resembling normal thyroid or agoita. Uncommonly, the cystic changes are dominant, and it appears as a multiloculated cyst, which may be mistaken for serous cyst adenoma. Microscopic features. This image shows an admixture of normal sized follicles, micro follicles, as well as macro follicles, filled with colloid. The neoplastic cells are uniform, hyperchromatic, and basally located and lack cytologic atibia. Mitotic activity is not increased. The whole range of pathologic changes seen in eotopic thyroid can also occur in struma ovarii. Diffuse or nodular hyperplasia. This photo shows a multinodular struma ovarii with cystic and firm areas. It is similar to multinodular goiter of the thyroid gland. This photomicrograph shows variably sized follicles. The follicles can be small, hypercellular, and compact with little or no colloid. Some nodules may show huge follicles lined by flattened epithelium and containing large amounts of colloid. Thyroiditis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This photo shows extensive lymphocytic infiltrate with germinal center formation. The thyroid follicles are small and atrophic, and the follicular cells show prominent of the philic, who a cell oncocytes change 
but no or reduced colloid. Malignant transformation is seen in about 10% of the cases. They range from well differentiated papillary to follicular to anaplastic high grade carcinomas. Papillary thyroid carcinoma. This photo shows complex branching randomly oriented papillae with fibrovascular cores. Nuclear features change of nuclear size and shape, including nuclear enlargement, elongation, and overlapping. Chromatin characteristics, including chromatin clearing, optically clear chromatin, chromatin margination, glassy ground glass, nuclei, orphan any nuclei. Nuclear membrane irregularity, including irregular nuclear contour, nuclear grooves, and nuclear pseudo inclusions. Follicular thyroid carcinoma. This photo shows invasion through tumor capsule, transcapsular penetration, vascular invasion. Visits within or beyond the capsule. Tumor covered with endothelium attached to the wall or with thrombus. Anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. Grossly, it is a bulky solid mass, mean 6 cm, with zones of homogeneous and necrosis or variegated appearance. Three patterns, which can be singly or in any combination. Sarcomatoid pattern. It shows malignant spindle cells resembling high-grade pleomorphic sarcoma. Giant cell pattern. It shows highly pleomorphic tumor cells with marked nuclear hyperchromasia and some tumor giant cells. Epithelial pattern, squamoid, squamous tumor nests with abundant density xenophilic cytoplasm, resembling non-creatinizing squamous cell carcinoma of the lung or upper erodigestive tract and occasional focal keratinization. Lymphoma. It varies by histologic type. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma. It shows diffuse infiltrate, destroying thyroid follicles. It shows the large cells with moderate amphophilic cytoplasm vesicular nuclei, and prominent nucleoli. Bizarre cells may be seen. Multilymphoma. It shows infiltration of thyroid epithelium, creating lymphoepithelial lesions, lymphocytes stuff glandular lumina. It may have a background Lymphocytic thyroiditis. Follicular lymphoma. Usually prominent follicular pattern with prominent interfollicular neoplastic infiltrate. Lymphoepithelial lesions are common. May arise on top of thyroiditis. Peritoneal stromosis. It is a representation of extra ovarian stroma ovarii with benign thyroid histology. PET CT scan of the pelvis demonstrates multiple peritoneal deposits scattered in entire abdominal cavity in this photo. Omentum shows multiple gray white to brownish nodules. 
Deposits are observed on a small power. This image shows a benign thyroid tissue on the peritoneum. Prognosis and therapy. The treatment of choice is oophorectomy along with removal of any extra ovarian implants. That is stromosis. Stroma ovarii is an endolent tumor even in the presence of malignant trans formation, which is seen in about 10% of the cases. Factors associated with the tumor recurrence include large tumor size, presence of adhesions or ascites, a solid microscopic appearance. Long-term follow-up is necessary. These are the references. Thank you.